Sagen Sie jetzt mal bitte A. Ah. Anarchie. Ah, Anarchie. Anarchie. Ob geschichtlich oder brandaktuell. Mit Berichten und Interviews, mit Beiträgen und Collagen. Beleuchtet das anarchistische Radio Berlin das Phänomen des Anarchismus. Viva Anarchie! As Anarchist Radio Berlin, we had the opportunity of talking to an activist of the Anarchist Federation in Glasgow. The interview was about the local activities as well as the Scottish independence referendum and the rise of nationalism in the region. So I'm in Scotland now, sitting here with a member of the local federation in Glasgow. And first thing I want to know is what are the actual political issues here in Glasgow? Okay, at the moment in Glasgow, we have got several things coming up at the moment. The, the main thing that we're dealing with locally is, is to do with like welfare and benefits and claimants um, issues. Um, now that goes into struggles around disability and being able to to live in the face of cuts being put in place by the government. Also for people who are unemployed and for people like receiving any sort of state benefit at the moment there's a, a big push to make them be seen as scroungers or to be seen as somehow a problem that has to be dealt with rather than rather than folks who deserve to have a decent sort of life. As well as that, at the same time, there's attacks against migrants and asylum seekers in the city with a restart of what had been a, a few years ago, uh, a series of what were called dawn raids, where members of the Home Office and the police would turn up to someone's home to take them into detention um, for very early in the morning, thus the, the dawn raids title and that had been resisted previously but um some in some ways the sort of landscape in Glasgow has changed so it's restarting that network to to resist that sort of both evictions of people who are in in, in a bad way and people who are are coming into Glasgow seeking seeking a better life how do you fit into these struggles like as your role as the local anarchist federation i guess the way in which we fit into this is to offer solidarity and practical help in places where it's being sought. So to contrast this, we don't see ourselves as being the leadership of a campaign or to be the people that you come to to get things sorted. We'd see it as being really, really out of order and really a bit sort of patronising to just turn up in a, a neighbourhood where none of our members lived and or turn up at a place where none of our members worked and start yelling about the state of things there. So what we do is we focus on the problems in our members' lives. Like if our members are claimants in some way, if they're working, then we look at workplace struggles where they're based. And when it comes to other wider issues in the city, like the, the two sort of main areas I've mentioned, it's about being there when, when solidarity is needed, like practical on the ground activity. So for something like none of our members at the moment are asylum seekers or migrants. And so the way in which we can sort of practically offer solidarity there is, is we've been asked to help a local group called Unity. And they're a group that, that deal with, with those struggles directly. Okay, so they're, they're like Glasgow's no borders group and also act as a, a place where you can, where like people coming to, to Glasgow for the first time can get help and find other people in the same same position. And so it's led by the people that are, are directly affected by those struggles. Uh, and one of the things that recently they've been looking for help with is for people to, to stand outside the home office buildings where they have to go in and register each week and actually flyer, uh, and like hand out information about what they're doing, how to find them, what they're all about, what meetings they have coming up. Because if somebody who is going through the asylum process were to stand there and do that activity, then they would be targeted by the Home Office for removal, for being put into detention and eventually removed from the UK. So this is a, a way we can offer practical on the ground support. And so um, when it comes to things like uh, claimant support, 
rather than having the, the anarchist federation step in and try and act as the, the leadership of a, a situation. There's already a claimants union uh, called West Gap. Uh, stands for West Glasgow Against Poverty, but it covers the whole city. And they are doing that sort of on the ground practical, like a, a, a radicalised version of a, a citizen's advice bureau. But unlike a, a, a citizen's advice bureau where where you go in and an expert tells you what to do, and you're, it's very much a hierarchical relationship. Westgap try and break that down, try and provide, uh, empower people to to a level where they can they can do anything that's within their abilities. But then when things fall outside their abilities, either because of a, a lack of bureaucratic knowledge or because of an issue arising from disabilities or mental illness, they offer to to help with those those gaps in, in ability. Let's change the topic a bit. I think a big topic last year was the referendum. It was also a big topic in Germany. So can you tell me something about the, the effects of the referendum in Scotland? Absolutely. Okay. So the referendum has had a, a huge, I would say, overall negative effect on the political landscape in Scotland, despite the, the sort of the look on the surface. Because in the time that the referendum was being built up, in the sort of two to three year build up period, the sort of ideas of nationalism have crept back into politics as being acceptable. They've went from being a, a sort of fringe sort of unacceptable or, or very sort of like minor position to being seen as accepted. So this has had a, a big effect. Now, for any campaign or activity that's going ahead from a, a sort of a more sort of liberatory perspective, the answer is always put forward that, well, we the first step in this campaign is to get independence rather than just dealing with the issues no matter who's in charge. The idea of creating this new government will somehow make things better, which I don't think the experience from within our own lifetimes has, has sort of shown. We could look back at the the Labour Party coming back in, into power after 18 years of Conservative gut rule, and people were saying this is a new start, a new beginning, a new hope. Like... The, the slogan Labour Party, the Labour Party were using where things can only get better and they used that as a cover for acceleration of the, the sort of neoliberal programme uh, and for the, a, a deepening of neoliberal capitalism within Britain and I think the same could be said of what's happening in Scotland that no matter who won or lost in the referendum it was for, for, for the working class a, a big blow and one, one that will be reeling from for quite a while With regard to the who won in the, the referendum, the real winners were the Scottish Nationalist Party. Even though you'd think that a, a no vote for independence would be a loss for them, the, the day after the referendum, that very morning, their membership skyrocketed exponentially. Not just them, um, the Green Party also seen up because they were very strongly in favour of independence. Their membership shot up as well but not to the same level as the, the SNP. And that's very dangerous. The SNP play a, 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 a the perfect opposition, especially when the Labour Party have failed to, to play their role as opposition. So in the west coast of Scotland, the SNP is very much like the Labour Party of old. It's old socialism. It's uh, public services and looking out for people and a sense of society. On the East Coast, where the SNP took over from the Conservative Party, the Tories, after uh, when went back in the late 90s, um, they play a very conservative-sounding role. Members over there that have now been elected in Parliament come from... Uh, some of them have came from the, the Conservative Party and are now members of the SNP. So they play... This, this sort of position, but if you look at the, how they vote and how they go forward and, and the things that they put in place, they only concede concede things like putting a hold on bedroom tax or like putting a, a hold on fracking taking place in Scotland. They only have conceded those when working class movements have started to form around those issues. So it's only to been to stop them looking bad so that they can ultimately gain more power. Any time that they've 
they've had an opportunity to look out for the working class from their role in government, but there's been no pressure on them. They've not acted, and they'll never act. So they've really won out because the they've had this membership boom post-referendum, and they've got a membership who are keen to do something. They possibly never been politically engaged before that in any real way and they want to do something because they think independence is the way to a better a better society that's what they've been told and that's that's something that they've weighed up and and that's where they they come at things now so the SNP sent out a pack to each of their new members because there's a general election this year saying look we've got to get members of parliament that are from the SNP to represent Scotland's interest and they said, put up, this pack had a poster and said, put a poster in your window with our symbol and our name. And here's a badge that you should wear when you're out and about. And when someone asks you who you're voting for, tell them you're voting for the SNP and, and, and try and convince them. And so they had this huge membership base, not everyone doing that, but a, a larger portion than you've ever seen before, at least in a living memory. And that that's had an effect. They've they swept, a, they swept the Scottish part of the general election. Um, there's one member of the Labour Party, one member from the Tories and one member from the Lib Dems. Every other seat in Scotland went to the SNP. But now they, that's, that's brilliant for them again, because now they can say that the, the reason the Conservatives came into power as a whole wasn't due to the SNP vote. It was due to Labour's failure. So that they can, they can play up that Labour have failed, not the SNP have no power, Labour have failed. The SNP that are in Westminster are in a position where they're a minority and so that they can't win, even with Labour support. Although, again, because they can play to both left wing and right wing, they are able to make noise. They've got the youngest member of parliament that's been elected, is, comes from, from like outside Glasgow, from Paisley, and she's able to, to use rhetoric that, that people are very... That very uh, it sounds good, it even sounds good to me. Okay, but I wouldn't believe it. It's it's not believable because she's in a party that, that doesn't stand for those values, no matter what it says. But she's able to make speeches trying to reach out to the Labour Party to make out like we're trying to cons- like create an opposition to the Tories. Why won't the Labour Party get on board with us? So they can, they can play that angle while still supporting a very right-wing, very, very sort of neoliberal economic plan. It's it's and so the next step for them will be to carry this on into the, the Scottish elections in the coming year. Because now they can say, Well, we've got the evil Tories, bad evil wicked right wing in power, we've got to stop them somehow. We've tried with Westminster and we're doing the best we can there, but we're a small minority. We need to come to power in Scotland as a stronger majority here so that we can we can get a better grasp on things. But then after that I, I foresee that they will gain ground in the upcoming elections. And then the next wave of, of excuses after that will be, well, we don't have as many powers devolved to us. So ultimately, they're building up a strong power base to become a, a small C Conservative Party for Scotland so that when, and I think it is a when Scottish independence becomes a reality, they're the strong party to be the, 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 the main leadership party for, for a time. Because at that point, their the rhetoric will turn to defensive rhetoric of we have to defend the gains we made. So, yeah, that's that's a big sweep of the political landscape at the moment. I guess before the referendum, there was a lot of propaganda and activism going on here. Has there been any anarchist reaction to the uh, referendum? Or what happened to the, the anarchist movement here? That's a, a sort of another interesting topic because I'd say... The, the, the sort of sweep of nationalism throughout sort of definitely left-wing movements in, in Scotland has also came into the anarchist movement. Some people have, have sort of been swayed by the idea that having a government body that's, that's physically closer to you will be easier to win concessions from, which may or may not be the case. Um, it may be closer physically, but it will have a larger bureaucracy in a, 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 a per capita so it might be a stronger more embedded government also the ideas of nationalism sweeping through to there are government rather than a, a sort of like enemy but that's came into the anarchist movement in the sense that 
we can even see people who have been long-term anarchists in Glasgow joining like political parties like the the Green Party and the the SNP so we're dealing with actual neoliberal political parties that the anarchists are bending their principles towards now they say they're doing it with a critical eye or to to hold these these parties to account for their actions but that that severely severely ignores what political parties are and their role in society and their role as part of the state so I think the the best thing we, well, at least ourselves in the the Anarchist Federation can do is have a consistent critique of the state and a and a realistic critique of nationalism and its role within like society to split up the the working class and to to just keep arguing that. But rather than, I think it'd be a, a mistake for us just to go up to people who have been like now casual supporters of the SNP and just say you're wrong. That will just set up a, a situation where they'll, they'll be defensive and they won't be receptive to, to any of our ideas after that. I think the, the way that we're going forward at the moment is to go up to people and say, well, you're supporting independence and you've gone into these political parties on the assumption that they're going to solve problems in your life or problems that you see with society around you. And then we talk about those problems, those struggles, and then we say, well, how are you... How are you not your party, not anything else? How are you getting involved in those struggles? Like, and also not just like putting them on the defensive, but saying, here are ways you can get involved in these struggles. If you've got a, a struggle with a, against benefits cla- that are being taken away from you, here are the groups that are fighting that. Here are other people in that struggle that you can you can network with. You can you can sit down together and work out how you want to fight that fight. Same goes for almost anything if it's an environmental struggle. It's about linking up those people, finding the, the sort of like the, the commonalities in struggle and then then getting people involved in those. So even if they have joined a political party, they might be seeing in, in time the fact that the party doesn't actually do anything and that, that direct action and self-organisation are the, the keys to getting any real change. So you're not going to to run an anti-election campaign next year? I think rather than running a, an anti-election campaign saying don't vote, it would be far wiser. And, and what we've done with the general election that just passed and seemed to be moderately successful was to run a campaign saying this, like, don't be apathetic. Don't just put your, your cross on a ballot and then think that's politics done, done with. We want to say like the things in your life making you angry get out there and, and and tackle them come out with us and tackle them we'll come out and help you tackle them we can do this together like rather than hoping that a politician will will hold their promises only ever happens when it's in their interest so i think the the sort of campaign we'll be running will be one of like get involved don't be apathetic like let's get some actual activity going All right. Thanks a lot for your views and insights.